Welcome back and a big day of racing at Rose Hill yesterday and uh, Johnny I suppose a lot of the shine or a fair bit of the shine taken off let's get physical. Yeah Mike uh, he looks rather dull this morning as a matter of fact uh, he came to town with a terrific reputation after winning the Blue Diamond in fact scoring a sequence of brilliant wins in Melbourne. Um, it's hard to say what happened on the day. I heard all sorts of theories. A couple of good judges thought connections might have gone a little easy on the horse during the week and he might have been slightly underdone. I don't think he looked that way. I could see plenty of his rib cage before the race. Uh, his rider seemed to restrain him a good deal in the first three or four hundred metres. I think he was frightened he mightn't make the first turn terribly well. So by holding him back to the horse on his outside, I think he thought that, that horse might keep him on the track but the tactics didn't suit Let's Get Physical, who's a natural speedster, and I think he's a horse you've got to let run along. And when he didn't, the finishing dash was not there. Exactly right. You know, if horses have a natural attribute, such as speed and brilliance, you've got to let them use it. You can't check them or restrict them. Anyway, that's only my theory, and, uh, well, uh, I don't back too many winners. Let's have a look at the Risling Slipper Trial, the first event on the program. This was for the two-year-old fillies, and it was the boom boy Darren Gouchy's first winning ride in Sydney, believe it or not. Now, as they come to the turn, Super Swift is the leader. Fair habit in hot pursuit in the red cap on the outside. In third place in the black and pink is Blazing Miss, and his Darren Gouchy tearing around the outside on beach gown in the black and white striped sleeves. Now, Gouchy knew that he had to have that filly in full flight when they got to the top of the straight, and that's the reason he had no hesitation in going via the Cape. Fair Habit looked the winner when she raced up to head Super Swift, but watch Beach Gown now, and the Jeff Murphy train filly puts in a storming run down the outside. Beach Gown is coming home far the better. Gouchy looks quite confident, really, in contrast to Ron Quinton, who's hard at work with the whip, and Beach Gown, at the very big odds of 14 to 1, goes on to beat Fair Habit, and that's sudden Peter Cook's mount coming home into third place. Now the Colts and Geldings division in the Todman Slipper Trial, and let's get physical, which had been under restraint in the early stages, kicked away at the top of the straight when Financial Affair on the outside wanted to duck off the track slightly. Asaka with Wayne Harris on board is coming through in the centre and that blocky little chestnut cult is in full flight now as they race to the 300 metres mark. Now on the right hand side of your screen in the red colours with the yellow sleeves is the Neville Begg train praising with Ron Quinton on board. He was expected to offer stern opposition to the other two horses but he, as you can see, never got a look in. Asaka had the sitting shot at Let's Get Physical and starts to draw away in the last bit and he goes on to score a brilliant win at odds of seven to one let's get physical at nine to four on and praising who's now out of the slipper at seven to two he had to win yesterday to qualify well we've seen some great fillies in recent years probably emancipation being the most notable but have a look at this one avon angel she leads a very big field in the rosemount classic as they turn for home with peter cook sitting against her Getting up on the rails is Love a Kiss on the outside with the white blaze is entrancing and then Wing Keel in the green and gold with the white cap. But I'd invite you now to park your peepers upon a very brilliant filly. Peter Cook allows her just a little bit of rain, not much, and look at that acceleration. She just leaves them floundering in her wake and Avon Angel has a bright future. Cook sitting hard against this beautiful filly as she cruises to the line to win the Rosemount Classic with a lot in reserve. Cook has a peep over the shoulder and gives her as easy easier run as possible. I believe she's going on to the Doncaster now. Avon Angel at 9-4, to four, beating Wing Keel, and Eastern Bay got up for third. We've all heard the expression, or the nickname, the Enforcer, that has been uh, dubbed on Mick Dittman in recent years because of his great strength and his never-say-die attitude. I don't think it's ever been more evident than it was in this race yesterday. And there's Mick on the extreme outside of those leaders in the orange cap. He's riding a horse called Alibi. On his inside is Prolific. In, on the inside of Prolific in the blue and white quartered cap is La Grigia. And on the rails with the baldy face is Rising Prince. Now watch the Enforcer. He's using the whip in his right hand. Look at old Alibi's tail swishing to and fro uh, as Mick uh, drops some very well-intended ones on him with the cane. Alibi responds to Dittman's hard riding and he draws away in the last bit to score a very good win in the Rawson Stakes at odds of 15 to 8 and he loves the Rose Hill track. Mike uh, Dittman's mansion and property in Brisbane yesterday was passed in at auction for 570000 well, he's, uh, he's a nomad, but uh, he's found his pot of gold down here. I can understand Alibi wanting to get to the end of that race as quickly as possible too, John. I can see the mentality there. He's unbelievable. The sooner I get to that post, the sooner he's going to stop hitting me. Exactly right. Mind you, I don't want people to think that, uh, that it's a cruel aspect of racing because it's not. Uh, that whip is made of whalebone. It's got a two-inch leather flap on the bottom, and the whack the horse gets would be 
tantamount to a ruler around the back of the legs by the schoolmaster, and I'm quite sure you would have uh, you would have been on the receiving end of that once or twice. I felt that, but uh, have you asked the horses about this? Well, you go and have a look at a horse's backside after a race, mate. I'm only kidding. I'm really, only kidding. It's really nothing. I, I don't want people to get upset about that aspect. All right. Now, uh, the slipper coming up, and uh, to me, uh, shaping up as a great race, principally because of this uh, champion from uh, Adelaide. Yes, New Atlantis. Matter of fact, uh, Mike, on the program next Sunday, uh, we're going to have a, a lengthy Golden Slipper preview. We'll look at all of the top chances and uh, we can rekindle the memories of the great atmosphere of Golden Slipper Day as we saw last year as young Darren Biedman uh, brought Inspired back to scale. That'll be next Sunday on Sports Sunday, a big Golden Slipper preview featuring New Atlantis. And for a fellow who spends so much time with the littlest sportsmen, the jockeys, you also like the biggest ones too, the wrestlers. Yeah, I do, Mike. I like the Al Grunt and grown men. My interest was rekindled recently when I read with great sadness about the death of Chief Little Wolf in America. Probably the most colourful of all wrestlers at Sydney Stadium in those golden days, in the late 40s and 50s. I thought I might uh, get out and um, uh, talk to some of the people who knew Chief Little Wolf and some that actually uh, locked in combat with him, including Roy Heffernan. Uh, Roy didn't actually wrestle the Chief, but he knew him extremely well. And uh, we had a camera crew in Detroit, Michigan, uh, seek out a man called Al Costello, who was another great draw card at the stadium, a man who wrestled Chief Little Wolf and uh, we're going to do that in a special segment on wrestling um, two weeks from today. All right, we'll look forward to that, Johnny. OK, mate, good Thanks luck. Thanks for being with us again. Pleasure. And we'll be back uh, in a moment with uh, more on Sports Sunday. Yeah, baby, what's the matter? Is this the real? Is this the real? Coming up next on Nine, sit back, relax, and take up your special seat in the circle for our matinee movie. And tonight, Channel Nine proudly premieres The Man from Snowy River, with a magnificent cast headed by Tom Berlinson, Sigrid Thornton, Kirk Douglas, and Jack Thompson. The legend that became a movie, tonight at 8.30, rated PGR. 